Warriors basketball. Wiseman with four seconds, with three. Jones from midcourt at the buzzer. It's good! It's good! Casey Jones hits a three from half court at the buzzer. And Wiseman has won the basketball game. Unbelievable! Two receivers on either side of the formation as Manning is back to throw. He's going up top for Philiver. And Philip comes it. up with it. Touchdown Greenies, a 33-yard reception. What a catch by Pike Philibert, and what a throw by Arch Manning dropping it over coverage. This is the American on ESPN Plus. Tonight from Uptown New Orleans, two teams trending in different directions. The East Carolina Pirates, winners of four of their last six against the Tulane Green Wave, who have dropped three straight. As we head into the final weekend of conference play, Houston is the one seed, Memphis is the two seed. No matter what happens tonight, Tulane has to beat Temple on Sunday to secure the three seed. East Carolina, two wins and some help, and they can climb as high as seventh in the standings. We welcome you courtside inside Fogelman Arena, Devlin Fieldhouse, Paul Vora and David Grubb. This game originally scheduled for February 11th, but because of the tragic passing of legendary broadcaster at East Carolina, Jeff Charles, game rescheduled for tonight, which means three games in five days, and these two teams squaring off twice in three days. Hi everyone, Paul Boron, welcoming you to Coconut Beach Sand Volleyball Complex in Kenner, Louisiana, as VSN brings you coverage of the AVP Next Gold Tour, the stop here in the New Orleans area. Great weekend of action, and we were all set to show you the women's final. We we will have the men's final in just a little while, but the women's final was going to pit Taryn Cloth and Kristen Nuss, the LSU products, were going to go against Larissa and Lilani, the Brazilians, in the final. Unfortunately, cramping causing Larissa and Lilani to have to forfeit the final. Nuss and Cloth are the champions of the New Orleans Open in their professional debut. What a way to go in front of a huge crowd all weekend. And so we're going to show you some of that action. We're going to show you their semifinal victory as they beat Kimberly Hildreth and Katie Hogan in what was a great semifinal and really showed the dominance of Cloth and us all weekend. So enjoy that. And remember the men's final coming up in just a little while. You're watching the American Athletic Conference on ESPN Plus from the City Park Tennis Center in New Orleans, Louisiana. It is tennis action between the North Texas Mean Green who come in with a record of seven and 10 against the Tulane Green Wave with a record of 10 and seven. Paul Boron and Andrew Byer inside our ESPN Plus studios here on the Tulane campus. And Andrew, if there was ever a contrast in rosters, these two have it youth versus experience let's start with north texas and amanda stone who has a very young team in her first year with the mean green the south Lone conference title race is wide open and tonight at the university center on the campus of southeastern louisiana university in hammond the lady lions of southeastern will play host to the uno lady privateers in a huge southland volleyball matchup hi everyone paul boron alongside clyde verdin and clyde both the Lady Privateers and the Lady Lions are right there, just one game out in the Southland Conference race. Paul Warren along with Lake Charles College Prep head coach Matt Guillory and coach, these two teams know each other very well. They had a dramatic ending a year ago and Peabody has had to stew on the way they lost for 365 days. Down the baseline, cross in trouble, nearly turns it over, McGee gets it back. Passes it to Sian James, and he throws it down. Nearly disaster for Tulane, but they recover and have a three-point lead. Just passed 11 minutes into the third period. A lot of action, but no one has found the back of the net yet. Here's Walker moving in. Walker shoots, he scores! Zach Walker with the goal to put Pensacola up 1-0. Jones trips coming off the line of scrimmage. They're still gonna go up top to Jones. This was designed for him the whole way and he still makes the catch and he's gonna go all the way for a touchdown. That is unbelievable. Jones tripped over loop at the line of scrimmage, still gets off the ball and pulls in a 65 yard touchdown for the Greenies. The Golden Eagles after going hitless since the third inning get a single and a two run homer and they have tied this game at 10 apiece. And this ball ripped to deep right field. It's carrying, it's at the wall, it is gone. Back to back home runs as Christopher Sargent 
goes deep. Sargent is the second leading home run hitter on this team and he's just hit home run number eight of the season and back to back home runs have given the Southern Miss Golden Eagles an 11-10 lead. Tulane ready to storm onto the floor to celebrate a win, but they gotta get one more. Burks off speed. Chance for the Panthers. Kapai is blocked at the net, and that is apropos as Skyers gets the block, and Tulane wins it 15 to 11 on the ninth block of the night by Sabrina Skyers. Jesuit looking to pick up the loose ball, and they do, and they get the outlet. Long ball for Calhoun. Calhoun knocked down. Here come the Blue Jays, 55 seconds. They've got a fast overtime. break. They've got numbers. Frischer shoots, oh! Wilson Frischer wins it for the Blue Jays at 3-10 of overtime, and the Jesuit Blue Jays are state champions. Low ball to the top of the box. Here's a long shot, tipped off the bar. Ball is still loose, McGee a shot, and a save by Wilson. Third shot, another save by Wilson. And cleared away by Long Beach. Wilson with absolute heroics. Serving Nuss, and Nuss, angle shot, and Cloth and Nuss in their professional debuts are on the way to the finals, 21-15. 21-15. Both teams in this second half, one team goes on a little bit of a run and the other team has had an answer. And ECU knocking down the three there to cut it to a two point game. A lot of basketball left in this game. Could really go either way. We mentioned it in the open, Tulane is the only team that East Carolina has a winning record against in AAC play, but Tulane has won two straight at home in the series. They are eight and seven here at Fogelman and Devlin against the Pirates. So it's been an even series between these two teams, and it's been pretty even most of the way tonight. A little light pressure from East Carolina as Cook will work on Walker. Cook embraces the pressure. One-handed floater won't go. He battles for his own rebound. It's loose and out to Osar. And Osar throws it down with two hands. And this game is tied at 58. Tulane looks to answer. Cross hanging floater is good. CU rushes it down the floor. Now we'll back it out. A much different second half <laughs> as far as execution and intensity from both of these teams. Maybe just took them a moment to wake up. And that floater is good. Walker now with nine. And uh, yeah, you mentioned it. I mean, there is so much more flow to this game in the second half than there was in the first. Cook, wild spinning shot, and he lays it in. Jalen Cook now with 17. I don't know what his what he's going to graduate with a degree in, but it, right there, he looked like an English major. <laughs> See, I thought you were going to go physics there with the spin. and <laughs> The English. <laughs> and Osar with the answer on the other end. Seven and a half to play, and we're tied at 62. This one has turned into a very entertaining second half after a bit of a disjointed first as Forbes steps five feet behind the three-point line and swishes it home. And the Green Wave lead by three. Jalen Forbes, no fear, stepping back and knocking that one down. 45 seconds remaining of four-on-four four play as this face-off will come to the left of Sean Kuhn as Hussey will step in against Johnson on the faceoff. Johnson wins it back to Enzer. Enzer holds behind Kuhn. Hussey waits for him to make a move. He doesn't. And now it is Russell. Russell hit hard by Hanson. Behind the net it is Soper. Soper ahead to Hanson. Hanson plays it too far and that'll be icing on the mayhem. So both teams in this four on four committing icing infractions, and so 
all the way back down to the face-off dot to the left of the Mayhem goalie, Michael Stiletis, the six foot, 165 pound netminder out of Woolbridge, Ontario. 4.66 goals against average, 862 save percentage for Stiletis on the season as Blazic battles for it on the near boards. Controlled by Soper. Soper has it intercepted by Parrish. Moves in, he shoots, he scores! Whelan Parrish gets the interception and gets the goal for the Ice Flyers. 10.40 into the first period, the Ice Flyers regain the lead on a sloppy pass by Soper. Intercepted by Parrish for the unassisted goal. A bad turnover from Soper from behind his net threw it right in front to Whelan Parrish who said thank you very much and put it past Stolatus and it's 2-1 Pensacola. Bondarenko goes behind Kuhn. Six seconds remaining on four on four. And then the Mayhem will have an abbreviated power play but here's another chance for the Ice Flyers. Ducking in, in front and Stolatus not able to cover and it's a goal. The Ice Flyers get another one. And it was Parrish again who was able to jam it past Stolatus as the four on four expired. So technically I believe that'll be a shorthanded goal as Parrish just worked in and it deflects off of the defender and carries in. I believe that it was actually last touched by two defenders. I believe Cutting got a piece of it. I couldn't tell who was falling to the ice. I believe it was Roper, but a fortunate goal for the Ice Flyers as they get two goals in 18 seconds from Whelan Parrish. Gregson calls for the ball. Pressure coming on the edge from Will Randall. He knocks it loose. It's a forced fumble and Randall picks it up. Randall at the 20, down to the 15. What a game Will Randall is having defensively. A forced fumble, a recovery, and it is the Greenies ball at the 14-yard line. I tell you what, if Steve Sarkeesian is <laughs> watching this game right now, which we know which we he know has he a is. VSN account. Hi, Steve. <laughs> yeah, he, he's thinking, man, this signing this Will Randall kid might even be better than signing Arch Manning, you know, the kind of game he's playing right now. But, geez, look at – I mean, he is just – look, we've talked about the matchup problem he is on offense. I mean, he is just wreaking havoc defensively right now. Now, the big key for him, I think, is, is how long is he going to be able to keep this up playing – every play on both sides of the football. Now, did he did come out on a play or two offensively in the last series, but, um, you know, it's, it, it's going to be hard in this early but, September humidity for him to be able to p go both ways the entire but game. But that brings in the importance of Will Orzel, who Coach Stewart has been talking about for a couple of weeks, not only because of his blocking, but because of his patch, pass catching. So if he well, they've can, got them both in right yeah, now. But so. he can give Randall a break and yes. trust Lorzell. Because yeah. uh, we it, saw Lorzell last year. Yeah. He's, he, he came into his own last year. So the Greenies, first and 10 at the 14. Play fake. Manning rolling left. He's got a man wide oh. open, and he misses Kai Donaldson. And a little look of disbelief from Manning missing that one. Yeah, you don't see Arch missing that throw very often. He is usually point on the money moving in either direction left or right he usually does a great job getting his shoulders turned and getting the ball on the spot and he just just i mean it could have been a touchdown if he oh, puts yeah. it in the hands donaldson walks into the yeah, end zone by himself it's a great there. play call on the naked i love the play call down here in the red zone uh, but just you know unfortunately arch missed that one manning has villary donaldson and uh lorzell up top and lorzell is open, but he's going to go to the near side to Zurich. Zurich's got all kinds of room. Will Zurich is in for the touchdown, and the Greenies are up two touchdowns on a 14-yard strike to Will Zurich. 